In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about print preparation and print output in Photoshop. Hey there, Michael Blushinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me on social media via the links below. And also make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get future updates just like this one. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about preparing your images uh, for printing and also outputting them to your printer. And so um, there's sort of various ways that we can go about doing that. And we're going to talk about it from the perspective of, you know, what would you do if you were preparing an image to go out to a print shop? Um, and, uh, you know, what, what changes you would make if you were actually printing it yourself on your own printer. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, we've got our image here that we're going to use as our sample. And so if you're curious how I got from the original to the final product, uh, you can check out the links to the courses that I have down here below. Uh, all the steps that I covered there are essentially what I used for this particular image. So what we're going to do is rather than working with the original image, I'm going to create a stamp visible of this. So I don't like to work on the original image because uh, when we're preparing out for print, we're going to make some changes, maybe alter the contrast, uh, maybe we'll crop it down, resize. And with all those steps, sometimes you'll run out of undo points. And what I've done before is actually save the image accidentally, not had enough undo points to go back, and I ended up covering my original image with um, all these crops. So that's not what we want. We're going to create a stamp visible of this, and we're going to work on it as a separate image. So we're going to hit Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E. That's going to create a stamp visible for us. So just make sure you select the top layer and use that keyboard shortcut to create the stamp visible. Then we're going to right click and say duplicate layer and we're just going to go out to a new one called print. So this is going to be the image we're going to print. Now, first off, let's say that we want to add a little bit of a border to this. I tend to always print borderless uh, when I'm doing the prints themselves because I don't really like to let um, you know, Adobe adjust the margins and things like that. Um, I'd rather just kind of visualize what it's going to look like with the borders uh, within Photoshop and then just print borderless at the end. So. We have this image right now it's cropped to eight and a half by 11 but i actually want to have an eight and a half by 11 output and then um, have a half inch border all around so in order to do that we need to take an inch away from both dimensions and so we actually need to crop it down to seven and a half by ten so we're going to go into our crop tool we're going to select ratio and we're going to just put in seven and a half by ten and then of course you can adjust the crop however you like but in this case i'm just going to stretch it out uh, maximum to the top and then we'll just crop that down, just have delete crop pixels selected there. And that's going to crop it down for us. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to size this. So we're going to hit uh, Command Option I or Control Alt I. And we're going to put in our width of 7.5. And, and we want to specify our DPI. So what we need to do is we need to size of this to, of course, correspond to the output media that we're sending it to. So I'm going to be printing to an 8.5 by 11. But I also need that to be in some specific DPI, dots per inch. And so my printer, for example, uh, which is an Epson P800, a uh, really nice printer, by the way, if you're looking for uh, a photo printer, and that's not Epson telling me to, uh, to tell you that, it's actually, that's the printer I use, and it's been working really well for me uh, for printing beauty, fashion, architecture, uh, pretty much anything. Uh, so that particular printer uh, goes up to, I think, like 2880 DPI. And so obviously we are not going to go that high because we simply don't have the image resolution in order to print that high. Uh, the original image for this was um, a 50 megapixel uh, phase one file, which I cropped down a fair bit. So uh, there's no way that I have enough pixels to create such a high DPI at the resolution or at the size that I want. And so basically what we need to do is to, to figure out how many pixels you need, you essentially multiply the height by the resolution. So if we have 11 inches and we have a DPI of 300, that's going to be 3,300 pixels that we need. And so if our image is less than that, we need to upsample. And if it's more than that, we're going to downsample. Now in our case, um, because I have 2880, what I want to do is I want to find a resolution that is kind of an even, um, you know, multiple of that, you know, it's easily divisible. So what we can do is, you know, half of that is going to be 1440, half of that is going to be 720, and half of that is going to be 360. So my target resolution here is going to be around 360 uh, DPI. So we're going to do 360 here. And what you'll notice is that it's actually this zoomed in. So that means we're going to be up sampling this. We need to add a little bit of resolution. Um, so for that, I'm going to use preserve detail. Whenever I'm enlarging, I tend to use preserve detail. And if I'm down sampling, then I'm going to use bicubic smoother. So we're going to click OK on that. And that's going to make an adjustment for us. 
And now what I want to do is I want to add back the half inch all around for my border. So I'm going to hit uh, Command Option C or Control Alt C. And that's going to open up our Canvas Size tool. So you just want to make sure that you're anchor anchored at the center. You don't want to be something like this or you know down here. You want to be anchored at the center. So that's what we want, and that is the default. And we're going to go back to eight and a half by eleven. All right, so we've got our half inch borders all around. We're gonna create a new layer on top of this, move the layer down, and we're gonna fill with the background color, which is white. So uh, Command Delete or Control Delete is gonna fill with the background color, and we now have a white border. So we're pretty well set in terms of DPI and um, our border, so we're, we're more or less ready to go out for print. Now, I do wanna do a couple little things here before I do that. So what I want to do first off is um, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast and then I'm going to add some sharpness to it. So let's just hit command J to duplicate this layer. And we're going to hit uh, command shift U or control shift U if you're on a PC. And that's going to just desaturate that layer. And then we're going to go to soft light blending mode. And you can see that adds a ton of contrast, um, which is probably more than we want. So I'm just going to go down and only add about 10% on the opacity there. And that's just going to add a bit of contrast, but not overdo it. Uh, so you can play anywhere from 5 to 20%, I find, is a pretty good number there. And then we're going to hit Command-J again, and here we're going to add a little bit of sharpness through uh, High Pass. So we're going to go to Filter, Other, High Pass. And we're just applying that to the duplicated layer. So we want an actually a desaturated layer, and we want it in soft light anyway, so that's why I just duplicated it. Now in this case, I'm going to use a radius of about 20 pixels. Um, usually for a full size image of, let's say, 8,000 8, pixels high, um, I'll use, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30. Uh, for something like this, I'll use anywhere from like 10 to 20. Uh, for this image, I find, you know, 20 looks pretty nice. You can kind of play around with it. At, uh, at a very low opacity, you're not going to notice much of a difference. So you can actually go quite high as long as your opacity is low. So you can go up to, you know, even 30 here if you wanted to. For me, um, I think 20 is going to give us a nice effect. So I'm going to apply that. And then let's go ahead and zoom in. And we can kind of see what that does. So zooming in here, maybe let's not go that close. Um, toggling this on and off, if you look around the eyelashes in particular, you'll notice that suddenly it just sharpens things a little bit. If you find it's not enough, we can, of course, increase this. Now, if we go to something like 60%, it's just getting a little too crunchy, a little too sharp. Uh, maybe 20% is a good number here, and let's just toggle that on and off. And we can see it's just adding a little bit of subtle contrast and sharpening, and I think uh, that's probably a good number. I'd maybe go 15 to 20% on this image. So let's just go ahead and zoom out. Now what we can do is we can stamp visible again if we want to apply, um, let's say, some grain to it. So we can hit Command-Option-Shift-E, Control-Alt-Shift-E, and that will create a stamp visible, and I can use something like um, alien skin to add some film grain to it if I want to give it more of that film look. I'm not going to show that here because um, you may not have alien skin exposure and so uh, you know your situation may be different but that's usually what I do at the end is I just add a little bit of grain to my image um, to finish it off. So at this point we're pretty much ready for printing. Now uh, obviously it all depends on where we're printing this. If we're printing it with let's say a printing press uh, then it's a different story than when we're printing it on our own printer. So with a printing press, we need to apply generally an ICC profile to it. And this ICC profile is effectively um, some description of, you know, the color uh, for a given media and a given printer. So it contains a set of properties and essentially a mapping for how do we map um, our current, uh, you know, color space, which could be Adobe RGB, for example, to that output. And so Usually, if you're working with a magazine and you're doing an editorial for them, they will have their printer's ICC profile. So they'll send it to you and they'll say, okay, send me the images in uh, high-resolution TIFF with that ICC profile applied. And if that's the case, then what you will do is you will, uh, first of all, you have to download that profile, of course, from them. You have to save it in the appropriate place. Uh, I'm not going to go through that because it depends on you know which version of uh, Mac OS you have or if you have Windows. Um, just look up uh, saving ICC profiles and it'll tell you which folder to drop that ICC file into. Um, but once you do that and you restart Photoshop, it'll be available for you. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to use convert to profile because I'll show you what happens. If we do that, then... Um, actually, sorry, what I wanted to show you is don't use assign profile. Uh, assign profile will basically just assign that profile to your current color space without actually you know, applying a appropriate conversion of it. It just kind of ad hoc applies it and that's it. So if we wanted to use my P800 um, premium luster paper, if we select that and we use preview, 
uh, that will show us what's going to happen and that looks pretty terrible so obviously we don't want to use that um, never use really assign profile so go in and use convert to profile and that's actually going to apply the mapping from your color space into whatever profile you've selected so in this case this grackle profile is an actual printing press profile for a magazine and so if we select that um, we toggle the preview you can kind of see that you know it alters some of the contrast um, it will look a little bit different and that's kind of the case because the color gamut on the output end is different than what we have on our monitor and so here you can kind of decide if we want to use um, this black point compensation sometimes it helps sometimes it doesn't sometimes it makes very little difference at all um, oftentimes what I find is there are certain images where the blacks just look really dark and they look clipped so using that black point compensation will kind of map them to more of an available gamut and it will look better might not have as much contrast but it'll show more of that range within the shadows um, ultimately it's you know goes image by image and so um, you just kind of have to decide which one looks best now there's a couple of intent options here and uh, we'll look at some of those when we're uh, sending it out to printing because there's a nice description there so um, that's kind of the best place to go with it uh, if you're uh, sending it off usually I find perceptual is kind of the best way to go it uh, perceptual pretty much just means that it will try and map the colors or the gamut that's not available to something that is pleasing to the eye and so that's usually what I tend to use so we've got this profile and we're gonna essentially click OK and that's going to convert it over so our image will look a little bit different from the original and part of that is because we are now actually in CMYK we're no longer in RGB color we're now in CMYK color and you'll of course notice that uh, in your channels too that we now have CMYK and for printing that's of course what we want now if I were sending this off to uh, the magazine printing press whatever it might be I will just save it as a TIFF file uh, make sure you embed the profile into that um, particular TIFF file and you're good to go now because I want to print this on my own printer I'm not going to do any of that and actually one thing I'll also mention is when you do that it does flatten all of your layers so if we're at this state it's all flattened so make sure there's nothing in there that you wanted to keep but we're gonna go back um, to our original so this is still in RGB if we look at that uh, we've got RGB now this is actually Adobe RGB color space and we're going to hit um, Command P or Control P to bring up the print dialog. So now we're actually going to print this off. Now we have two options at this stage. We can either let the printer manage the colors or we can let Photoshop manage colors. And it really kind of depends on um, what it is that you need. Now if you have the printer manufacturer's paper, then usually printer managing colors works just fine. And so what we need to do is we pick our printer, of course, so we've got this... Um, Epson P800 that I have and we're gonna hit print settings that's gonna bring up the print dialog which of course will vary depending on uh, the uh, print manufacturer you have so if you have Canon it might look a little bit different your options may be a little bit different here uh, to what they are on the Epson now the first thing of course you have to specify is the paper size I actually just created my own eight and a half borderless customer uh, size where I uh, zeroed out all of my um, my margins here so that it's completely borderless of course assuming that your printer prints borderless which you have to of course confirm so I created that one there and um, you can create a whole bunch of them I just I named it myself because there's no real you know equivalent up here and so I just wanted to make sure that it's explicitly listed eight and a half by eleven borderless and so I set that one up and then you can go into printer settings and this is generally where you'll configure your paper and um, the color mode so the paper is the paper I'm using is this ultra premium luster and then uh, that's essentially part of the ICC profile of course the one part being the printer and the other being the output media which is my luster paper and then what you're gonna select here is what color mode is going to use so this off no color management really doesn't work very well um, in the case of this Epson so this is not an option that I ever really use if I don't want color management then I'll do that through here where we select that we want Photoshop to manage the colors so you're gonna go into manual settings and you're gonna select either Adobe RGB which is what we are in or sRGB if you're printing from a JPEG that you saved for example to the web uh, if it's an sRGB then that's what you're gonna use and it's gonna map it from sRGB into the ICC profile versus Adobe RGB into the ICC profile so in this case we're gonna select that we can select our DPI which we're gonna to stick to 1440 and that's really all we need to do is paper and color options now in this case I saved this as a preset so make sure once you set it all up you got it saved so you don't have to keep configuring every time so I've got luster Adobe RGB hit save there and at this point you're pretty much ready to fire it off and print it out 
Now, if you're looking for a manual approach to handling the colors, you don't want to go through uh, the printer managing the colors. And where this is helpful is if you've got a third party um, paper. So if you have something like Ilford, for example, which will not list here. So if we go into this print settings, I do not have that option for Ilford paper. So if I go to print settings and I pick my paper, um, that's just not there. It's all Epson paper. Surprise, surprise. Epson only gives you options for Epson papers within their software. Um, so if we do that, if we have, let's say Ilford, we need to go through this particular channel here to do that. So let's go ahead and cancel that out. And we're going to say Photoshop manages colors. And what that's going to do is when we actually select our paper, so this is actually the Ilford profile right here. It's the uh, Ilford premium glossy paper for the Epson P800. And you can just download right from their website. You kind of just pick, you know, that I'm, I've got an Epson printer, it's a P800, and this is the kind of paper I have. Uh, and it will give you the appropriate ICC uh, profile for that printer for that paper. So once I select that, you'll notice the image is going to change and it's going to give you sort of a preview of how that's going to look when it prints out. And that's just by selecting match print colors. If you don't see a change, then that just means you haven't checked that off. Now, in order for this representation to be accurate, the one thing that you of course have to have is a properly uh, color calibrated monitor. And to do that, you need a calibration device. Uh, if you've got a high end monitor like an ISO, then of course it has uh, built in color calibration. If you don't, then of course you just have to buy a separate one and they're anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks. They work really well. It's really easy to set up and it's very important if you're doing printing or sending off to um, you know, something like a printing press because again, when we're applying that ICC profile, we need to see the accurate colors as opposed to the colors as they are interpreted by your monitor. And so like, you know, Mac monitors tend to be pretty good, but I've seen some PC monitors that are way, way off. And so um, be sure to always color calibrate your monitor before you do any sort of printing um, and really before you do any kind of work. It's just a good thing to do. So um, assuming you have a color calibrated monitor, this will give you a pretty good representation of what the output will look like. And you notice that, you know, compared to the Adobe RGB, the blacks don't look as deep because we just, we don't have it. Um, that particular paper is just not going to give you those blacks. And, you know, it's a combination of paper and ink, really. Um, and the whites may look different. And if you want to get an accurate representation of the whites, you can say show white paper or show paper white here. And what that's going to do is it's going to show you what the actual color of that paper is. And you can see this one's a little bit kind of bluish. It's a little cooler. And so it does look different than the original and then gamut warning really just kind of tells you what areas have gamut problems so that this you know either this printer or this particular media doesn't really support those particular colors and with that that's where all of these rendering intents come in and you know how is it going to handle uh, those areas that are out of gamut and what you can do is um, again i usually select perceptual and then if you want a description of it you can just hover over it and the description area here will tell you uh, what that actually is so you can kind of go through them and see which one you think is best. Uh, generally, relative color metric is more for proofing, and we're going to talk about proofing in a minute. Uh, perceptual just kind of, like I said, matches it to make it pleasing to the eye. And then saturation really just focuses on trying to maintain saturation. Um, and that's really, it's good for landscapes, but not so great for uh, pictures of people. So perceptual tends to work well. And then black point compensation depends on the image. With this particular image, I find it really doesn't make a difference. Usually I do tend to have it turned off though. So unless there's a good reason to turn on, um, I, I, you should be okay to leave it turned off. Now, again, when you're starting off, you're doing this for the first time, kind of trying to get a feel for what works best. Um, you know, get yourself a couple of four by six sheets rather than printing eight and a half by 11 or something like, you know, 17 by 22, uh, because you're gonna use a lot of ink, a lot of expensive paper, and it's gonna turn out to not be what you want. So do a quick proof on a four by six. If it looks good, then um, you know which color profiles to apply, you know, you know, kind of what settings work best, uh, then send it out to your larger media. So now that we've got that set up, you can just hit print and that will print off, map the appropriate ICC profile and um, things just look good. So that's option number two. Now, if you are actually sending this off, uh, in addition to what I was showing you with the ICC profiles there, you, what you'll want to actually do is not apply the ICC profile. Uh, when you're doing this test, you'll just want to leave it in Adobe RGB. So don't go through the assign profile or convert profile uh, that we talked about there. Uh, leave it in Adobe RGB, go in here, and basically if I want to see what is it going to look like in that coded Grackle ICC profile uh, that we kind of briefly talked about earlier, if I want to see what that looks like on my printer, what we can do is we can use something called hard proofing. And that's basically going to say, I'm going to try and simulate this proofing profile on your 
printer. So it's going to compensate to make it look similar to what it's going to look like on that printing press with that particular proofing profile. So now this is not the, the profile I want. And it's kind of confusing to say, okay, well, how do I change this proofing profile? Well, it's um, actually what we want is we want custom setup. So we want to go into custom setup and here we can pick that coded grackle. Um, and what you can also do is if you have it already as custom setup and we have something like this, for example, and you want to choose something else and you don't really see how you can select it, what you need to do is go to working CMYK and then back to custom setup and then it will launch this dialogue. So it's a little bit confusing, but um, just kind of have to juggle back and forth. So if I pick this code of Grackle ICC profile, again, I can kind of pick whichever I want. I want for, for proofing, usually relative color metric is good. So we're going to click that. And now we're kind of ready to send that off to the printer. So again, that's going to simulate that particular ICC profile on my printer. So it's kind of a, a cross between, you know, the ICC profile that is appropriate for my printer, but sort of interpreted under the proofing profile of uh, the code of Grackle. So it's going to give you a good idea of what it'll look like when the printing press goes to run it. And that, of course, depends on, um, you know, the, the paper you're outputting to. So if, you know, the printing press uses a semi-glossy paper or a matte paper, try and match up to that. And, of course, depending on the whiteness of that paper, if it's, you know, very pure white, um, then you'll want to have something that is similar to that. So obviously accounting for those shifts in paper quality, um, you know, it will give you as close as it can. And, and obviously it does a lot of that. Uh, through the ICC profile, but you know, ultimately, it kind of depends on. I mean, if you've got a yellowish kind of paper with something that is very eggshell, and they're printing to white, there's just no way that it's going to make your eggshell paper look pure white. So the ICC profile can only take you so far. So again, you know, the proofing is it's an estimate, but it's not a perfect example necessarily. But usually, you'll just have normal proofing there or normal printing, and um, pick your rendering intent, fire it off to the printer. So that is it for actually printing, um, ICC profiles, all that fun stuff. I hope you found that helpful and not too confusing. Ultimately, when you're printing it yourself, it's fairly straightforward. Just size it, set the appropriate image size in inches, DPI for your output. Um, you know, either set it so that the printer manages the, um, the colors or have Photoshop manage it, obviously depending on whether or not you're using original manufactured paper. And uh, away you go. Overall, it's fairly straightforward as long as you have a good printer, uh, then I find there's really not that many issues with getting your colors to work accurately. And of course, it also depends on the output media you're using. And you can kind of get a good idea of how it's going to look through that proofing window, the preview that's there. Uh, if you, if I selected, for example, a matte paper for this, uh, if I wanted to decide, you know what, should I print this on matte? What I can do is go in here and select my something like a matte canvas here. And you'll see what it looks like. It doesn't look great. Uh, the blacks just don't look very good. So that's probably not the kind of media I should be using for an image of this type. And it's a nice thing to say, okay, you know, when you're when you're buying paper, what should I be buying? Should I buy, you know, cold press natural? Eh, you know, maybe it's not the right kind of paper for my style of photography. And for me, I, I do find that this luster paper does give a fairly accurate representation of what the original image looked like. Um, and it looks great for beauty shots, fashion shots, you know, has nice color. So that's what I often stick with for my portfolio. Uh, so again, nice way to kind of say, should I buy this paper or not, um, without actually investing the money and trying it out. But again, make sure you have smaller packs, um, you know, four by six and some bigger ones, and always proof to your four by sixes. So you save yourself some ink. So again, um, hope you found that helpful and uh, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get more updates like this one and click on the subscribe link below and we will see you next time. Take care.